up and welcome back to Interpreting the Scare! So that's right, we're back at it on a month long journey through the nightmares. We get another film to check off that bucket list of terror. The movie that I'm looking at today came out in 2014. This was before I got married. This is before I had my two sons. So really, this was before the real horrors of the world came about. I'm just kidding, we're talking about the Babadook. <laughs> The Baba Duke is about a single mother and her child who fall into a deep well of paranoia when an eerie children's book called Mr. Baba Duke manifests itself in their house. And it says scary things like Baba Duke Duke Duke. <laughs> I saw this film when it first came out and uh, it's quite an interesting experience because there's both things that I really like about it and stuff that I kind of hate. First, the things that I love about this film is how creepy it truly is. I completely understand people when they say that this is one of the scariest films of the decade because in a lot of ways it is because it's very smart and how it approaches the genre. If you're somebody that just likes to watch a scary movie just for being scary, you know, just on the surface stuff, this film has everything that you need out of it because on the surface it truly is just a bump in the night, creature feature, boogeyman type of movie, and if that's all you're looking for, then this film has everything that you want. But if you're looking for anything else, there is more to be found under the surface because in a lot of ways, grief is the true monster of the film. When you're introduced to this family, you find out that this mother just recently experienced a very, very tragic event, and she hasn't really gotten over it. So throughout the film, you realize that she has insomnia, she's not sleeping very well at all, and when you start to realize that, you start to question on if the Babadook is really this paranormal creature that's, you know, haunting them, or if the mother is manifesting it through hallucinations and maybe the boy is experiencing it as well because he's just an imaginative young man, which he can clearly be seen as. So is the Babadook real? Is it fake that it's just being imagined by this young boy and this mother who ex is experiencing grief and experiencing hallucinations because she isn't sleeping? What is it exactly? The more you think about that, the more fascinating this film becomes because I don't think it really gives you a true, honest answer to that. And also, that grief comes into play more and more throughout the film and it offers you an alternate view on who or what the villain of the story is. Like I said, grief is the monster, but it goes a little bit deeper than that because this woman begins to be very, very verbally abusive to this young child. It's hard to watch, honestly. But here's the thing that I don't like about the movie. Don't hate me, but this kid. He's played off to be this incredibly odd, awkward, weird kid, and that's exactly what he is in the worst possible way. The first time that I watched this film, I watched it at night when my soon-to-be wife was trying to sleep. And she was complaining so many times about turning that racket off. That kid is getting on my nerves. And it's true, the kid is so obnoxiously annoying. He's like crying his face off every scene. I swear to God, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's annoying. And yes, the mother, kind of needs that to play off of because she's also supposed to be annoyed by him because that's affecting her grief in a way that's relatable and everything. But part of it is the fact that I don't think the child actor here is very good at what he's doing. I don't think he's a very good actor, which is truly unfortunate because the actress playing the mom does a great job. So while she's doing a great job, the kid's doing a horrible job. And so my acting score for my rating spreadsheet is right down the middle because I couldn't say anything else. It's great and it's bad, right down the middle. But honestly, that's not really why you're watching it. You're really watching because of the story here, of how fascinating it is, and how much it makes you think, and how much it makes you want to talk to others about it, about your theories on it and everything, because yeah, there is no substantial answer as to what's going on in this film because it can be translated in many different ways. And some of you might like that, others might hate it because you want more of a clear path when it comes down to film, you, you want it to make more, a little bit more sense. Everything else is technically done very, very well. The cinematography is on point, the, uh, the look of the creature of the Babadook is pretty memorable all around. The sound design is very, very efficient in what it's trying to, to do because a lot of the times you're not seeing anything, you're hearing it. And that's amazingly 
amazingly well done. Atmospherically, the film is indeed creepy uh, all around. That's the part of the film that will work wonders for those of you that just like to watch on the surface horror types. So let's take a look at my final score for a second for the Babadook, Babadook, uh, Duke, Duke. B plus overall score of 84%, 84 out of 100 possible stars. As you can see from my unbiased score, that's 82%, and my bias score is 86%, which means in general, it you know, it's a fun time in the movies. I don't think it's super engaging all the time because the pacing is sometimes wonky, but as long as you're pulled into the story, as long as you're pulled into the uh, concept premise of the thing, I think you can enjoy overall. But guys, have you seen the Babadook Babadook Dook Dook Dook? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next horror film review for this Interpreting the Scares event. And until then, peace out.